if I may. Um, I want to talk about summertime overheating. Yeah. And um, we have some concern about the um, target mm. of uh, 10%. And um, there's been some talk that um, mm. we have between us, and I think it may be also in Germany, about mm. reducing the 10% yeah. because of the potential for I wanting agree. to safeguard for the future. I you agree, well, yes. that's easy. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah. Um, uh, we yeah. always recommend to, to have it by 5% or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Uh, because that's a better indoor climate, yeah, yeah. and uh, the best advertisement for buildings like that is if you have a good indoor climate. Mm. So, so the ten percent that was in Germany, we we targeted from the government. This is what normal buildings normally can just uh, afford. But in a passive house, we can do better, mm. and we always can come down to five percent in a climate like like Britain or or, or Germany. So why not do that? Uh, I, I I completely agree. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple of issues about uh, heat gains, and in particular mm. we are concerned about um, heat mm. gains from hot water, yes. which aren't at present counted. It, that's our understanding in PHPP. And we're concerned about, again, the summer overheating. And okay. would, 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 uh, some yeah. of our hot water systems are not very efficient, uh, and we do have some, um, some hearsay examples of hot water systems in low energy houses being causing a lot of thermal discomfort. Yes, you are right. Yeah. I think it's very important to have a look on efficiency of the domestic hot water system mm. as well. And, uh, well, you have in the PHPP a calculation on that mm. efficiency, um, uh, but it's, uh, it's done in a, a little bit separate way because I didn't want to introduce that uh, to reduce the heating demand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So because absolutely. that will yeah. that will influence yeah, yeah. Uh, it in a completely mm. wrong way. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Uh, so I agree that we have to improve the efficiency of the domestic hot water mm. systems. Mm. It's a very important thing, and uh, I think there are lots of ideas how to do that. Um, and, and it's important. It, it's in the PHPP, but it's uh, separated from the building, which I think is the right way to do it, uh, mm. because you shouldn't heat the building by losses of a hot water system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, finally, I mean, I just wanted to find the last of the technical questions. It's about this, uh, the, the, the gains, the 2.1 watts per square meter. Yes. Um, from what we've seen and the figures of domestic electrical consumption in the UK, mm. uh, which are the figures which are used in our SAP calculation, mm. um, this is a very, very small figure. And um, I'm interested in how that came about, and if it's in fact actually, uh, is this a figure for the future, or is it? Can this be obtained now? Can we actually get down to appliances and lights? Can we get them down to 2.1 watts per square meter now with the current available technology appliances? First of all, you'll have to see that this figure is the overall internal load and not the electricity. Yeah. Uh, that's different because the uh, electricity uh, which is supplied to a house uh, is used inside the house, but it's not completely um, available in the in, in the home. So let's have a look on the washing machine. Uh, uh, the hot water will com will be completely pumped mm. out of the system mm. and it will in the drainage, and then it will be cooled by cold water mm. again. So a washing machine is more a heat sink than a heat mm. source. And uh, so we have to analyze these things very, very closely. Uh, when there are some heat sinks, some other heat sinks as well, like uh, domestic cold water, like evaporation mm. uh, of an, and, and if you put all that together, um, you will see we, we, we've done that calculations and we have done that comparisons and measurements. Um, in the very first passive house, uh, we did a thorough analysis of all internal loads and it turned out to be one watt per square meter. Right. Yeah. So, mm. so, so doing that mm. thoroughly, we have mm. seen it's one watt. But now, again, uh, where we, we, uh, the um, uh, freezer was placed outside of a thermal mm. shell, uh, but that would change it to 1.3 or something like that. So, so I'm uh, quite sure that the normal figures, normally low, used quite in most countries are too high. Mm. Uh, if you really take into account what's really happening inside mm. of a building, there are lots of processes which are not accounted for, 
uh, which ha which have a, a heat sink uh, mm. uh, capacity, mm -hmm. and uh, so well. Um, of course, if there are very inefficient uh, things in the building, mm. like uh, incandescent bulbs and like old fridges and things like that, uh, the figure could be higher than mm. 2.1. It could be 3 or something like mm. that. Uh, but uh, in almost all ca uh, cases, it's not higher than that. Mm. And then, what is quite important, we have to design the buildings now uh, so that they will work in future as well. So even if you have a incandescent bulb and a uh, very low efficient refrigerator in the building now, mm -hmm. uh, you will exchange that in 10 years, in 15 years, and then it's, it should still work. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep track of, of, mm -hmm. of these things from the very beginning. Uh, so wh that's another reason why we are a little bit cautious with the mm -hmm. internal laws. Not, not that I say it's not, but what you already talked is uh, that measured results we're already giving a hint that it might be even lower yeah. than what we take into account. Uh, we know that if you have not good appliances, at the moment it could also be uh, somewhat higher, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think that this, this value is quite in the right uh, dimension. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Wolfgang.